Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie, the editor-in-chief at TheServerSide.com, and I wanted to show you how Git, GitHub, and GitIgnore all work together. Now, as you can see, I've got a GitHub repository over here, a few files, Adam, Baker, Devo, and Echo, and over here I've got that whole repository cloned to my local machine. And as you know, if I was to create a, a new file in here, and I'll call it hello, world.txt and I was to do the standard you know add that to the git index and commit it and then even push that to origin you know the standard steps add commit push well that hello world text file is going to get pushed all the way over into github so everything is working but let's say there's certain files that you don't want to add to your Git repository, or for that matter, your GitHub repository. Well, how do you do that? Well, all you have to do is create a new Git ignore file and make a reference to the file extensions or the folders or whatever it is that you don't want to add to Git. So I'm going to create a new file in this Git branch examples folder here, and I'm going to call it Git ignore. That is the convention. It has to be called gitignore. Don't be impressed by the touch command. It's just a simple way to create a file. So you can see gitignore is created right there. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to say star.cameron and star.mckenzie. And now I've said, hey, git, ignore any file that ends with the .cameron extension or the .mckenzie extension. Those aren't commonly used extensions, but they'll work for this example. So if I was to create a file called my name is .cameron, again, don't be impressed with the touch, it's just a way of creating a file. So my name is Cameron and hello world.mckenzie, another file created there. created that file. I got to get the syntax right. So you see I've just created two new files here. Well actually three. I've added git ignore as well. But watch this. If I do git status, git status should tell me of all of the different files that have been created or changed in this folder. Uh, since I did the previous commit, .cameron, .mckenzie, and .git ignore have all been created. But if I do a git status, notice it says, hey, there's only one new file there. And the reason it's saying there's only one new file there is because git ignore is telling it to ignore all the dot Cameron and dot McKenzie files. So even just a git status shows that git is completely ignoring those files. Now if I do the typical git add and git commit dash m, files added, you can see it says only one file was added to the commit. And again, hello world dot McKenzie and my name is Cameron weren't committed, weren't made part of that commit. And for that matter, if I do a push to origin, if I push back to GitHub, well, it only sends one file. And if I do a refresh over here, this refresh is not going to have Hello World McKenzie or My Name is Cameron. It's only going to have the Git Ignore. So watch this. Refresh and boom. Git Ignore is there but none of the files with those extensions are. And so that's a, a quick overview of how the git ignore file works. Now I need to tell you, there is a whole git ignore syntax. So, you know, you can do cool things like say, ignore all log files, except for a log file named important.log. And you can say, ignore everything in subfolder logs. And so there's a whole syntax on how you can configure your git ignore file. And uh, so I would suggest going to the man pages or the documentation to really get detailed uh, files on how to set up your git config, git ignore files. I um, mean it's also worth mentioning that when you create a new git repository, I'll create one quickly here, you notice that one of the options is to add a git ignore and it'll say well what are you developing? Um, are you developing action script? Are you developing C? Or are you developing maybe a Java program? So I'll come over here. I'll see if I can find a Java. Now I'll click create repository. And as soon as this repository is created, it'll automatically have that git ignore file. And that git ignore file lists all of the standard things that you don't really want to check into a, a Java repository, like your compiled class files. And so you can have these 
Git ignore files created for you. By the way, you can always go to gitignore.io, a great little tool from Topital, and uh, you can even say, hey, you know, I'm going to be developing in the Eclipse IDE, and Eclipse generates all sorts of files you don't want to check in, and it'll actually create a ignore file for Eclipse as well. And if that's the case, you could go over to your Java file, edit it, paste in all of the ignore files that make sense for Eclipse, and now you've got your own git ignore file in your GitHub repository that is not only going to work with your Java files, but also ignore any of those tedious little files that Eclipse might generate as well. And there you go. That is a quick overview of how Git and GitHub and the Git Ignore file all work together. Now, if you enjoyed that hopefully fairly brief and to the point tutorial, uh, why don't you head over to the servicesite.com? I've got lots of great tutorials on Git, DevOps tools, enterprise software development over there. For that matter, if you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and please subscribe on the YouTube.